Right. Hi everyone, I'm Anthony and today I'm speaking to Simon from Home Search. Hello Simon. Hi Anthony, how are you doing? I'm fine, thank you. Thank you for joining me today. Um, I've wanted to speak to you for quite a while because mm -hmm. you're quite innovative in what you've done in the th facilities that you've added to your website. So tell us a little bit about Home Search and how it came to be. Yes, yeah, so Home Search um, started um, with Giles and Sam, the co-founders. It must be about three years ago and it's taken a lot of money and a lot of blood sweat and tears of theirs to get it to where it is now um and it's been uh, yeah an incredible journey for them over the past few years i've only just joined in the past few months but i've been a user of home search as an agent for kind of 12 to 18 months before that so i've kind of seen it grown from the outside in and now i'm in it but yeah it's taken a few years to get to where it is um and in january of this year uh we started charging to agents for our kind of data intelligence platform um, and then at the start of July, we're actually going live to the public as well, which has been going on for probably two months now. So yeah, very exciting times. So, um, I mean, how I, it, the, the first thing that you brought to my attention with Home Search was your home buyers reports, um, uh, marketing reports, and they're actually brilliant. Um, mm -hmm. I love how it collates information and it doesn't just take an ad average, it looks out for similar properties in the area, similar size and bedrooms and plot and takes so many things into consideration. Um, it can literally take three hours, two hours of research <laughs> and turn yeah. it 10 minutes, can't it? Yeah, I mean, that was a great thing for me was, um, you'll know what it's like when you've got a busy diary and you've got back to back appraisals and you think, God, I need to get in at stupid o'clock in the morning to get all those different tabs open on, on the internet to find all that information. Um, but it's all there in, in one place. So yeah, you've got, you know, title number, plot size, square footage, EPC rating, sales history, and literally within minutes, you can collate that information into a lovely kind of branded report. So it's got you, your logo, your color. So it's all about you when you go out and see the client and it looks like you've put hours of man hours into producing that report. Now, we know you'll know your marketplace very very well but it, i think that when you get such a short amount of time with a client in their home you need to do everything you can to help convey that message and i think the home search report helps does that but again just reiterating there's no kind of mention on home search with it so it really does seem like you've put in the man hours to produce that for a client which is awesome yeah i did pick up it's totally white label uh yeah. with your own branding logo everything and of course, it's not a case of a skilled agent just simply relying on that. Mm -hmm. Obviously, a skilled agent is going to can uh, is going to have their personal input and opinion and advice. But it is fantastic to have something that you can put together very quickly that you can reference to and have tangible figures of sold properties, similar properties, etc., 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 market reports of the the area. Uh, average value so on and so on and to have that in your own branding produced in minutes it's just brilliant it's a wonderful thing to have in your hand when you're talking yeah. to people and obviously it's not just what the report does it's what you do with it which is obviously down to the agent but for me I it, it's what I feel that it's wonderful to have something as comprehensive as that to present to people when you are when you are speaking to them and i think it's also good as uh, as prompts for what you're going to say because as you look through the report mm -hmm. yeah you know you can you, you might not you, there might be things that you might might slip your mind or you might forget and you can literally go through the report and pick out things and then you know when you've gone from start to finish it's almost like a uh, like a schedule of your yeah market appraisal that helps you which is really really good and really helpful no, that, I think you've hit the nail on the head there. It's really good to hear. And I like the point you made of it's tangible evidence. So it's tangible evidence of what's going on in that agent of choice. Um, and then I like what you said about kind of, yeah, if you're sort of sat in a living room setting an agenda, you're understanding who they are, what they're about. So you can pinpoint certain points of a report. They're so detailed, but you can actually go, right, let's look at this bit, look at this bit. I think the report alone is data 
and that can not necessarily be relevant. So there's no silver bullet out there. I think we both know that, everyone knows that, but we give you the data and then you can turn it into relevant information that helps you tell those stories and paint those pictures. With and I think once you're in a, a position where you're in their living room and you, they can understand how the data you're showing them helps understand, right, here's a marketplace, we're going to find your buyer, I know the information behind that. That's what we're going to do. All of a sudden, you haven't got maybe a homeowner shopping on price because as we all say, in the absence of uh, differentiation, people shop on price. I think if you're going into that appointment with a fully branded report, as a homeowner, I'll be sat there going, wow, this guy's done his research. And if he is going to be half percent, one percent more, I'll be thinking, well, I'm confident he's going to get me a better result. So I'll go with him. So I think that's really powerful. Oh, absolutely. I mean, um, it, it's, not, it's not a case of, I think that sometimes there's a, you know, there's a misunderstanding in how anything with any service, how things can work. You need to demonstrate what you're worth, whatever it is that you are asking in not just what you know, but to demonstrate how far you would go, um, yeah. how seriously you're taking because the people you're speaking to are, you're asking them to literally uh give you responsibility for the most mm -hmm. valuable thing that they own in most circumstances um and yeah. it's not enough to just tell them i think or i'm guessing and to be honest it's it's actually a legal requirement to provide yeah. evidence of how you have calculated a price um so i think that that report having looked at it covers every single legal requirement that there is yeah. with regards to uh, putting together a valuation for a property, which is, which is great because you've got a record of that for the future. If it's ever yeah. questioned for any reason. Yeah, no, absolutely. And uh, that's something which I absolutely love. I'm certainly anyone who's worked in a, in an agency office with me over the years knows that I'm a data person and I used to have my own spreadsheets of pounds per square foot and things like that. So when Home Search came along and I had reports which could help reduce that time and have pounds per square foot, again, you're going into a point where you had so much confidence in talking price because you're saying, well, look, here's the average pounds per square foot. Here's the information of a pounds per square foot. Whereas maybe another agent, as we know, over promises, under delivers and says, oh, I'll get you this price. But you kind of go, well, where's the evidence to support that? Because this evidence doesn't suggest that's going to happen. So no, it's very, very powerful to, to give, have those price sensitive conversations that we all have. I'm trying to get my head around what kind of work behind the scenes there has been to create a database to do this, because <laughs> not just the database, um, it is, it, you know, it is literally... It, there are so many variables here. Um, I, you know, I mean, anybody who's ever seen, not that I know much, but anybody who's ever seen sometimes the, the raw, how it sort of works, effectively, you know, in database, it, it is if this, then that, if this, then this. Yeah. I can, I can act, I'm actually picturing just millions of lines of code to be able to work this sort of thing out. I, I can't get my help, I can't even imagine it. How much work did it take? Uh, a ridiculous amount and it's still ongoing and it will always be ongoing i can't claim to uh, be be any part of that we've got some amazing uh guys in the background who are just unbelievable at what they do in terms of coding uh and getting all this information i think we've got the benefit of well as well as for um giles has um another company which is kind of a data company which kind of home search has kind of come from um so that helps on the data side of things um, and then Sam co-founding it from sort of an Australian real estate background and an agency in London, he's got that estate agent head on him and them combined together has been a really good like recipe for success with that team behind. But yeah, you're right. It's ridiculous. Uh, the amount of work behind the scenes to get all this data. I mean, there's about 29 million residential properties in the country um, and every single one of them is on this platform. And it is everyone. crazy the amount of details you yeah, everyone. So whether it's on market, off market, you can search it. Um, so yeah, it's crazy how much information you can get. So literally you could be on the phone, someone phones in for an appraisal, you take their postcode and within five seconds, you've literally got their property in front of you. Mm, I like that. Yeah. <laughs> I, like, I like that. I mean, I, I, I mean, I'm picturing how much is involved here because you've got all of that side of it. You've got the main 
sorry, I think I paused it there. I was just saying, you've got, you've literally, you've got That's your, good. you know, you've got your hardware, the, the maintenance of the hardware, your bandwidth, the maintenance and monitoring of it. As you're growing, your bandwidth is growing and yeah. there's covering all of that side of it as well. And they're just the things that I've thought off the top of my head. Um, uh, yeah. That's yeah, <laughs> I, I think one thing I didn't add as well is that, uh, and it's a really, really good thing is we update our data at the start of every month. Mm -hmm. um, and Sam puts it really, really well. And I'll try and replicate what he says. Uh, and apologies to him if I don't do it justice. But he basically puts in a really nice way of imagine you've got a bathtub full of water. And at the end of every month, we unplug the bath, the water goes away and we fill the water back up. That's what we're doing with the data. So right now, if you're producing a report for a client, it will say, as of the start of May, the population was X. Mm. When we then go into June, it will say, as of the start of June, the population is Y. So we're continuously updating our data. Um, so yeah, it's constant, constant work there. Um, well, obviously, I, you know, you know my, thoughts, my thoughts on that, of course. But moving on to your property listings, which you're going to be launching in July, is it? Yeah, start of July, um, the kind of public user site will go live. Um, and essentially, every single estate agent listing in the country can be on that site. And we will never, ever charge agents to list properties there or also provide them back with leads. OK, so you have a sort of a free fee structure on your site. You've got a free uh, free pro network. Is that for the home search reports? Access. yeah yeah basically if i if i break it down into the kind of the three sections should we say so on the free side an agent can basically go into the home search platform that already exists which you've seen anthony and they can do a few searches a few reports each month but if they then pay some money to have a pro account so per user or on an office package they can actually then white label reports they can do as many searches as they want it's unlimited they can do explore searches there's functions to send letters out through a report. And then the network, which is going live at the start of July, is essentially agents are able to connect with buyers and sellers in a marketplace uh, in a lot in a much more, I'd say, intuitive way than you can anywhere else at the moment. Okay. So, so to break that, I was just gonna say to break that down. So the free, the free side of it, as I said, free. Um, and then you get all your listings on the, on the platform. You get leads come through to you as well. And then you can do a few bits at the back end. And then for £55 a month, you've got a single user in an office who can use the pro platform. So they can, like I said, do reports, do searches, Explorer. And then £155 a month is the network branch pricing package. And that's up to eight users in an office. But then they also become a member of the home search network. So that's where I think it's going to be incredibly powerful. I think in a, in a market which is going to be tough coming up, it's going to be, I think, a great market, but it's going to be tough and only the strongest will survive. And I think agents potentially using that will help them identify the hot buyers and sellers in their market rather than perhaps the tire kickers that we know can be out there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, absolutely, absolutely wonderful. So where are you actually based? Um, so up until lockdown, our office was actually Canada Square Canary Wharf. Um, but as lockdown was happening, we were just moving over towards Notting Hill. Um, but lockdown happens, so that office moves on hold. We're all working from home at the moment. So we actually we actually started working from home. I think a week before Boris announced lockdown. So we got people all over the country. We got people in London. Um, I'm based just outside of Milton Keynes. We got Pagnell. Um, we got people up north, west, east, south. So yeah, we're we're all over the country. Um, from the first time. First time we spoke, when I had a look, I had another look today. Um, okay. You've actually grown a little bit since the last time I looked. How many <laughs> agencies do you have on board now? Um, so we're almost at 6,700. So last time, so I've actually just refreshed it and we're at 6,715. Wow. 6,715. So, yeah. Do we know how many roughly there are out there now? There was in excess of 20,000. Uh, I've, I've heard that it's below that, roughly. Yeah, I think we're still going on the on the view that it's about sort of twenty thousand. Um, I think that as of the tenth of May, so obviously it's about a week ago now. I think we had about five and a half thousand branches at that point, 
and I think that was 32 percent of the industry at that point so we've we've gone up another sort of thousand or so by then right. um, so that that percentage probably more like 40 percent um, at the moment and that's in how long has it been 50 some 50 55 60 days 50 yes. yeah, 57 days it's been yeah yeah, so yeah, not not, 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 not so bad you're, effort. You're fast approaching the halfway mark. Um, so yeah. uh, you know, from then on, I think it will accelerate. To be honest, once once you get beyond that point, but as I've said quite a few times, um, you know, here or there on my comments in LinkedIn, is I do sometimes wonder. I'm seeing I'm seeing comments from agents complaining, but then <laughs> the agents have all the cards in their hands, really. Um, the agents have the properties, the agents have the content. Without the agents, the website is just millions of lines of code. It won't have anything. So it's up to the agents to support people like yourselves so that they are then not held to ransom by anyone. Yeah, and I think that's why we've we've been so kind of avid from the start that we will never ever charge for listings or leads. So if you put a property on the home search site for the public to look at, that's your data that belongs to you. So if someone wants to look at that lead, if they click on the property, they view the listing, it takes them straight back to your website. Mm -hmm. And again, I think that's really powerful because, you know, agents out there have got some amazing websites, amazing social media, uh, you know, like yourself and, and final country. And we want to be passing traffic back to you you know the the less time they spend on us and go to you amazing it, it benefits you because if they see all those social media things that we were speaking about and they see about you and your brand that could potentially then be not just a buyer but another seller for you and an increase of business for you yeah absolutely um i mean um i think uh, i think i can speak for my colleagues as well i mean um we are literally you know on top of social media 24 yeah. 7 in the last seven weeks of lot lockdown I, I don't think i've stopped literally <laughs> or seven i've just stopped to sleep i've never worked so hard in my life to keep an online presence and i know my colleagues are the same and everything like this it is a, the way that i see it is we have an obligation to our clients to to give them as much exposure as possible everywhere and as i said before um i do think that agents can simply can very very easily change the status quo that they're unhappy about by supporting people such as yourselves um i'm not uh, criticizing anybody else or or any of the preceding big three portals in any way or anything like that i just feel that the power is in the hands of the agents and if they support people such as yourselves then they will actually get a better service from everyone because the, the tables will turn a little bit and ultimately it is down to it is down to the agents to change their mindset a little bit that we're not in a world where you're just going to put your property on one place yeah. and just wait for the phone things have changed you do have to give exposure in every way but that's only part of the total total package of tools at your disposal and social media you know it's a learning curve we're learning every day um i mean every day we we're getting uh links to webinars and this that and the yeah. other from sean i'm constantly yeah. watching christopher watkin as well yeah. and taking hmm. from him um i've got about a backlog of about five um five seminars from tom panos that i need to get through right yeah but you pick stuff up from everyone and i think that I think that now is, is, is the time that people need to decide, are they going to support people like yourself, help things to change and invest in, them, in themselves to actually yeah. improve their game and raise the game for everyone? Because in this country, you know, we do lag behind the rest of the world in many ways. Mm -hmm. I, I think where service for property is concerned and um, I know that, our our sort of efforts to to go forward it's just relentless and you know now i've got all your stuff to learn as well and i'm looking <laughs> through, i'm looking through your home bars report and i've been doing a few tests and yeah. you know i do have to say i'm i'm not biased here so you know um 
there's no no personal benefit here but I have done a few home bars reports and they are uncannily accurate. Uncannily good. accurate. Good. good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why <laughs> I'm just, you know, as a sort of a budding computer nerd, I'm baffled. <laughs> baffled by you know, by the by the programming in the back end to produce this kind of thing. Because it's it's not a database and property listings is just a database. You enter the criteria and the results appear. Prop, your home home search report is not that there's so many variables that must have taken a lot of work okay i'm repeating myself but i'm i find it quite I, <laughs> baffling how it's how it's working all that. I, this is like artificial intelligence terrible. yeah i think something something that you you'd said that kind of i just um made me think of something is quite random but I don't know if this was the case, but when you do like a maths exam at school and you do the, you put the answer and then you have to show your workings out. Mm -hmm. So I think it's kind of the same with like a home search report. You're sat with the owner, you're actually telling them how you've arrived at that mm -hmm. price. I shouldn't say tell, you're having a consultation on that price and you're looking at the demographics of a market that exists. So like the maths exam, you're actually showing your workings out. Whereas I think, a lot of agents are guilty of just planting a report on someone's table and saying, I think it's worth that. So I've been doing it 20 years. Um, and I think if I was selling my house right now, I wouldn't be overly confident in that person. Cause I think, well, they're just going to stick it on the internet and, and wait for the phone to ring. Um, and I think again, I, I think what's the stat is it's something like 60% of properties sell with a second agent. So I think that just goes to show as well that actually it's not as straightforward as sticking it on the internet. You do actually, have to have a plan in place. Is I it higher than that now? That sell with a second agent. I've got a feeling it's more like 70 to 75%. That's so mad. That's mad, isn't it? Um, mm. So you think, and I, and I get it because a lot of agents, again, no disrespect of, uh, if you sort of walk down the high street, every agent seems similar to the public. They've just got different coloured logos. So again, they just kind of go on the cheapest fee, but it's not, I think it's possibly again, because estate agency is not necessarily tangible because if everyone sort of says the same sort of price and someone will do it for lesser fee, they're going to go for a cheaper option. So it's important that you've got all the tools at your disposal to show them, look, yes, you do pay me a bit more, but I'm going to get you a better result, less stress, and there's essentially more money in your back pocket. And that, I think that's it really. Uh, well, I agree. Well, as I said earlier, the maths calculation, as you put it, is not just for a matter of credibility. It is a legal requirement. Yeah. In case it's questioned at any point in the future, you need to be able to demonstrate how you arrived at that price. Um, and I think that the more evidence that you have, the more evidence that you can provide from facts, from property that you've sold, which, uh, uh, which is called social proof uh everything that you can it is of paramount importance for the in, you know for credibility and to actually satisfy the clients that you have done your research and you're not just plucking a figure out of yeah there and asking a fee to just list their property somewhere yeah no definitely definitely and i had a couple of instances last year where i'd kind of shared a home search report when I was when I was an agent with surveyors when it came to doing a mortgage valuation or a home buyers report or building survey and they were really really impressed by the reports because they didn't have to go searching for the information it was there in front of them mm -hmm. and one of them was being a little bit unsure about, about pricing because I think we'd found one of those emotional buyers who were in the minority who maybe pay that extra five ten twenty thousand pounds and uh, the surveyor needed some comparisons and I'd got a report there for him. I said, there you go, have, have a look at that. That will show you what you need to know. Um, and it, mortgage valuation was fine, mortgage offer issued. And I think we set a new, a new precedent for highest price achieved on that street. So again, it's giving those surveyors evidence as well who need to, I think, need to prove to the lender that they're happy to lend that money to the buyer as well. Well, uh, it's interesting that you mentioned surveyors because actually the more surveyors that you get on board the better it will be for everyone because they can sometimes they can sometimes be an obstacle because if they struggle to collate information 
to cover themselves, they will yeah. often err on the side of caution, which means that they sometimes undervalue. Um, people get upset their property has been undervalued because they yeah. feel it's worth more. But yeah. sometimes these surveyors do, uh, as I said, just cover themselves. If you know, if it gets to the point where your home buyer's valuations uh, are considered to be legally valid uh, grounds for evaluation, meaning that surveyors can then more confidently refer to the valuation in your home bars report, I can see less instances in the future of surveyors downvaluing property just to cover themselves. And I suppose that would mean less fall throughs really, wouldn't it? Yes. Which is obviously going to save everyone well, just, a lot of money. You mentioned surveyor now, it just dawned on me, that could actually have a massive impact because it happens a lot and it's nothing yeah, to yeah. do with with property not selling or falling prices it is purely if if a surveyor struggles for comparables they often phone us and they we, ask we, us I, can you tell us about this one yeah. or that one or the other one um yeah and sadly they always catch me when i'm just driving or as ever and i <laughs> yeah, <very> yeah. <laughs> rare that I, have, I wish that you know were uh, you know i wish i could help because it would be terrible if i can't give them the figure of something that could result in them not you know, not going yeah. for a while and just saying, mm -hmm. yes, it could definitely achieve this price. Um, yeah. But if it gets to, if it gets to the point where your home buyers report, they're comfortable to say, I've used this home buyers report as well as my personal professional opinion. Yeah. I think that that's going to result, could help resulting in less down valuations and that will have a massive impact because it does happen a lot. Um, yeah. Again, what is it? A third? A third of sales fall through? Obviously, they're not all for down valuations, but no, no, no. Um, they can fall through for, for obviously for many reasons. Yeah. Um, obviously, there's a down valuations. I'm not picking on surveyors. I'm just <laughs> they've yeah. got to cover themselves because yeah, they're professional people and they've worked hard to get where they are. And if they don't feel that they can produce the calculation, as you'd said, then they are going to be cautious because they'll have to answer for it later. Um, the next blame that I'll apportion, which I always like picking on them for the sake of it, as you know, is solicitors, um, because I really think that uh, they take too long and they really need to sort of up their speed and up their game because the whole process in this country just takes far too long. It needs to be speeded up. Um, and so there's actually, there's actually a way that home search, and sorry to interject, Anthony, can okay. actually help on that in the short term, is that with part of a report, you can tailor it to whether you're sending it to a buyer, seller, tenant, landlord, surveyor, and even a solicitor. So you can actually do a, a kind of minor report and prepare it for, let's say, Anthony, the solicitor, and then you, put in, you can actually put in there, right, this is a price that was achieved. And on the target property, all, all of a sudden they've got, they know what council tax band it is, they know the EPC, they know the square footage, they know the title number, they know if it's listed, they know if it's a conservation area, they know any planning application. So if you've sent that through to the buyer's solicitor, even before they've received a draft contract, I'd say that could hopefully speed up the process because they've got information at their disposal so they can actually start the ball rolling, I'd say. So hopefully we'll be able to save time there on transactions as well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, as I said, I do think that sometimes it's through no fault of their own. Don't get me wrong. There are local, yeah. for example, that the searches yeah. take forever. Some are automated and it's very quick. Some can be very slow. But I just have a feeling that there's more that could be done to help speed up this process because sometimes things happen. And whether you're a buyer or a seller, it can be really, really frustrating to go you know, weeks down the line and incur expense and then something goes wrong before you're past the post. Um, so the sooner yeah, yeah. the process goes from A to B, the better it is for everyone. Because as you know, when your home is for sale or when you're going through a sale, your life is on, is on hold. Until, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you're not definite until it's past the post about where you're going to be in next month. Absolutely. Or week. So... Um, that's fantastic actually because it, it, I can see that helping helping in that way as well um, well to be honest I think uh, is there anything else that you can tell us about home search that uh, I, I've missed or don't know I'm sure there's lots I don't know but 
I mean, there is so, there is so much, and I could speak for hours. If there's any people watching this who have spoken to me, they'll know that I can speak for hours about it. So, no, I think I'll just say, if anyone does want to know anything about it, get in touch with Anthony or myself, and uh, and we can speak more about it. There's there's so much to it, but I think the best way to explain it is to actually jump on a Zoom call like this and actually show you it live as it happens. I'm in a really nice position where because I used it as an agent when I actually like demonstrate it to people. I actually say this is how I used it to help win business. Mm -hmm. um, and that's really powerful. It's not just me saying, oh, this is how it can help, but I actually haven't used it myself. So yeah, it, it's showing it in, in live demonstration, which is really good. Uh, so if anybody wants to get in touch with you personally, how can they get in touch with you the best way? I'd say the easiest way to get in touch with me is just to send me an email across and that would be simon at homesearch.co.uk. Excellent. Excellent. That's wonderful. Or if, uh, you know, uh, if you like, you can contact me, message me directly and I can refer you to Simon and he'll, he'll contact you. And if you want to know more about it, I'm sure he's more than happy to go through a zoom meeting and share desk and show you everything it can does, everything it does. Um, as, uh, you know, as they did with me, and uh, I found it very impressive, and I would definitely consider you take a look at it. So, um, Simon, thank you for joining me. Hopefully, we can do this again at a later date when you're, uh, you know, when you're you've grown even more, which I know that you will. <laughs> and uh, thank you very much, and I hope that this has been a help to all of you. Uh, all I can say is, guys, um, support support these people who are emerging and will change the industry and make things better not just for you but for everyone so that's all for today thank you simon Brilliant. thank you anthony bye thank you bye